Nashville, Tennessee. How do I look? The reason I ask is because I have a new camera, the new SD card set to the highest quality, and I'm hoping that I look a lot better now. Hopefully you can't see too many whiskers. Thanks for joining me. Today I've got a Taylor 810, and this guitar was uh, made in the late 90s in El Cajon, California. And we're going to be looking at finish repairs, little bubbles around the finish. El Cajon is down by San Diego. It's in the farthest southern part of California. Great sound of guitars. Let's look at some of these bubbles and look at some of these cool things about the 90s Taylors. The thing that attracted me to this particular guitar was the beautiful match in color that they did to the neck and body. Um, in the 90s, you'll notice a lot of these Taylor necks are all one piece, kind of like a Gibson or a Martin. The newer ones, you'll see a joint right here where there's two pieces sandwiched together with a side seam. Um, you know Taylors have the bolt-on neck construction. It's, uh, it has several advantages. It allows for uh, easier neck angle adjustments and facilitates more precise alignment during the guitar's assembly. Uh, Taylor is known for its commitment to sustain a, sustainable practices, and I think that's another reason why you'll find that the uh, newer models have a joint here, because they can use several pieces, smaller pieces of mahogany instead of a giant piece cut into, pe cut into uh, this shape. And this reduces waste. Um, these are valuable resources. And uh, you have to use guitar building techniques that are sustainable. A lot of the newer ones, you'll see a finger joint right here. Or maybe just a, a joint where the two pieces of wood come in at a seam like, that looks like that. This is all one piece. And I remember going to the Sam Ash Music Store in the 90s and just gawking over these guitars and how beautiful they sounded and looked. And I finally got me one. I don't know what was keeping me from getting one all these years, but... Um, I love them, and I think I see a little bubble right here. This might be one of the ones we're going to repair, and there's all sorts of bubbles all over the body here. Why would this type of thing happen to the finish? Who knows? Adhesion issues, I guess. But we need to talk about what type of finish this is. It's not nitro lacquer, like a Gibson or a type of acrylic lacquer like PRS or Martin might use. Most of your Southern California guitars are of a poly finish and that is because California has regulations on air quality and stuff and I think it's uh, it's hard to uh, get a spray booth for nitro lacquer which uh, meets those requirements. So the polyester and stuff has become really, really popular with the Music Mans and the Fenders and the Taylors and the Rickenbackers and stuff. Good thing there's a center seam that we can work with here because I might need to make a little slit in the poly so I can get this thin super glue into the area. We'll be using Stumac number 10 thin super glue to wick it into this uh, little bubble. Okay, we'll start with this one. I want to make sure I have a paper towel ready. I've got this uh, cam clamp, this is a mini, and I've got some plastic taped onto it, and I'm going to put some Johnson's Paste Wax on it as well. I'm going to put some Johnson's Paste Wax on this area and over here, just in case it starts to drip out of the crack. Okay, you can see that it's lifting. I usually don't like to hold the uh, super glue bottle right over a guitar, but this time I'm going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to wipe this real quick just to make sure I get some of the squeeze out, and then I'll clamp it down. I'll go with a little paste wax again, just in case we get a drip. And this time I'm probably not going to try to squeeze the 
bubble out, I'm probably going to just let it dry in the position that it was in there. Perfect. I'm just going to wipe this little bubble off. And that's it. That's what I wanted right there. I can hit it with some accelerator now. You want to wear a respirator or a mask if you're spraying this stuff all day long in your shop. Is there something about it that tells me it's going to kill us all? This is the reason I'm not talking. Protection. There is a ventilation fan back over here. An exhaust fan is what that is. I noticed on mo most of these there's a, like a little slit or a little seam that I could grab. This one doesn't seem to have one. So I'm going to create a little slit. O open it up a little bit. Now get that paste wax on there get my edge on this On this type of job, you don't want to spray the accelerator before you get the glue in there. Um, you could end up closing up the outside of the seam before it makes its way down to the furthest point, which might be what happened here. Sometimes I can push that little air bubble out to the edge with this hockey puck. There's one, but I think we should hold the guitar upside down for this because I don't want anything to drip this way. Let's put it on its peg head. We'll put the peg head to the ground. This should work. I've got that Les Paul up there kind of holding it. Exacto blade action going on. 
can't get it in this bubble. It's just sitting on top. There we go. Now on this one's going to take a little bit of polishing. I can wick up the excess on, under this paper towel and this is going to leave a big ugly mark so I'm going to the next the rest of this video is going to be showing you guys how to get rid of this this big splotch right here. Since polyester finishes are so resilient to chemicals, I'm going to try some of the super glue remover on a paper towel. You can even wipe these finishes with acetone and it won't damage them. Which is basically all this is, is acetone. So, that made life easier. Get you some of that. It's good to have on hand just in case. You can get it at Walmart and Lowe's, Home Depot. Wherever they sell goof-off products. Tar is also in here for a setup and a general tune-up, basically. I noticed the uh, the relief in the neck was a little bit more than I typically like in a uh, Taylor 810. It was 11 thousandths of an inch at the sixth fret, and these this was at standard tuning concert pitch. I'm going to come in here and tighten this truss rod of skosh now that the string tension is off the neck. Yeah, it's... That's a good feeling truss rod right there. That should do it. I noticed the first three frets have dents in them, mostly over where the B string hits. So I'm gonna give these a light dressing, because this is a this is just a setup, but I will throw in a little fret dressing if it's just a partial fret dressing on a setup with no extra charge for my customers. This customer also was the Guild D40 neck reset um, that I video that I did last month where I pulled the neck but I didn't go any further it actually needed a finish repair because I I had the heat on there for too long and it actually bubbled up same as what this finish was doing anyways I had to that was a nitro finish that old guild finish was nitro and I had to do an extent extensive month-long finish repair on that heel so I didn't show the full video it would have been too uh, involved for me to, to carry out but I've got another Guild D40 coming in, and I'm going to do a video on that. So this, since I did a, he said a fantastic job on the Guild. He's brought me all of his other guitars to make sure that they're in tip-top shape, and so that's why I'm going to go ahead and just do this at no extra charge for Frank. I don't use tape. I know there's uh, tape-happy luthiers out there. I have way more popular videos than me, so that's what everybody's doing. But if I just got a couple frets to do, and I'm so aggressive with this file that I'll go right through that tape, scratch the fretboard, all that crap. I'm not taking any height off this fret, I'm just hitting the, the sides, I'm beveling it, bringing it to a point at the top, and I'll let the sandpaper do the rest. Vacuum up all that, all those little file shavings, 
If they get down here on the neck rest, they'll scratch up the finish. Now I can use my sandpaper. No tape. I go 320 all the way up to 2000. Switching to 400. This puts an even crown on each fret. Every fret will have the same shaped crown. Six hundred. This only takes a minute. It's called a scrub block. If you don't have a scrub block, you can do it like this. This is a uh, this is hard on the joints. If you do this all day long, you might have some joint pain, some elbow pain, and it's uh, it's just a lot of wear and tear on the body that we don't need. And um, cutting all that tape is a big waste of time too. By the time I sat here cutting all the tape to tape off a fretboard, it could have paid for one of these. It's Twelve hundred grit. I found the, the way that fatigues my body the worst is to use my elbow, kind of like a windshield wiper, like this. The reason I wear gloves is see all this gray fret dust? I don't like getting that on my hands. I always wear gloves when I do the frets. The fret dust is a... Uh, very annoying. Now I clean the door with naphtha. See all that gray fret dust? Dirty stuff. The fretboard oil. This is the Mohawk uh, fretboard oil, and it has some polymerized linseed oil in it. I think it's it's got a Danish oil smell to it. Isn't that nice? Mohawk fretboard oil. It's good shit. Well, those of you that were following me every week are probably wondering about this stew mat kit from last week. And uh, yes, I got it finished up. Got the pit guard on there, set the intonation a bit on the saddle, uh, dressed all the frets, and I dialed in the height at the nut, the string height uh, at the nut slots. Let's hear this thing again. Has a a nice robust sound to it. Now, let's hear the Taylor. Thanks again for tuning in and subscribing. I appreciate it. It really helps me out. And uh, just want to remind you, don't never use Goo Gone Super Glue Remover on any finish that's not that you're sure isn't a poly finish.
poly finish is is resilient to almost everything. But if you if you put that stuff on a lacquer finish, or you mess around with super glue in general around lacquer or shellac, you're asking for trouble. Catch you later. Thank you.